I'd like to ask you today what you would do if you had a time machine. Would you go forward into the past <laughs> or backward into the future? Well, we've only got five minutes of time travel. Why? 640K of RAM, I don't care what Bill Gates said back in 81, it's not enough! This is one of my favorite time machines. It's my grandmother's clock. When I was a kid, I used to go to her house, and if I was lucky, she would let me look in the back of the clock and see all the workings back there. This clock started ticking about the same time that my mother was born. And in these days of technological rapid advances, I think it's important sometimes to look back at the past and where we've come from. And this is my time machine for that particular purpose. Um, my grandmother had a picture of my mother. You can't see it too well on that. When she was a child, her father built her a log cabin. Uh, she had a goat a cart. And uh, are you starting to get an idea of how this is a time machine? My grandfather had a radio that looked like that. He shopped in a store that looked kind of like this. Her phone was a little bit newer than that one. It looked a little bit more like this one. And uh, this was the iPod of the day, if you can imagine that. So a lot has changed in the past few years, and it, it changes even faster every second that goes by. And uh, this particular time machine helps me remember a lot of things. This is the TV that I grew up watching. Car radios used to look like this. If you wanted to play more than one record, you had to have a machine that could play a whole stack of them. So when I was a teenager, I started playing around with guitars and amplifiers. And people sent their old radios for me to work on or tear apart. I got a job working at a TV station where they had one of these. It's the very first videotape recorder with six racks full of vacuum tubes. So then they made computers and decided we needed to have them in our house. And all of these are the things that I think about when I see this particular time machine. So th these machines that we have among us, the ones that haven't ended up in a landfill, all of this can now be done in the palm of your hand, all those things that came from the past. Now this is the time machine I have in my house. It's a little bit more complicated. It's called a Scanimate. For about 10 years, if you saw computer animation on TV, it came from one of the eight Scanimates that were ever built. It's an analog computer, and it produced animation in real time. And so there were a lot of famous things, opens for Monday Night Football, CBS News with Walter Cronkite. This is the machine that a lot of that was recorded on. It's a two inch quadruplex recorder. And in the process of doing a documentary about this machine, I discovered that there are no machines left that can play these. This is a friend of mine in Johnson City has one in his basement that he's maintained over the years. Unfortunately, there's a manufacturing defect in all of the videotapes, and they're literally rotting on the shelf. So between the fact that you can't find a machine that can play them anymore, or somebody that knows how to maintain it, a lot of this is literally going to be lost to us. But it's not too late to rescue what remains of our not too distant past. That is, if you appreciate the value of these kind of time machines. So I'd like to ask you for a moment to think about what's the best way to save a piece of video? Does anybody have any ideas? Memory? 
Memory, okay, how do you make sure that it's going to be here for more than just a little while? Memory tends to be... Pardon? Digital, okay. So then what do you record it on? One of the problems is that everything is, is being converted to digital now. But what do you store digital information on? You hear a lot on TV about, oh, we just put it in the cloud, and that'll just take care of everything. Well, or you put it on YouTube. What, there's no guarantee if you put something on YouTube that it'll be there 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 30 years from now. And furthermore, if you put it on a CD or a DVD, not many people know this, but those media all disintegrate slowly but surely. The, the numbers I've heard are that you can expect a CD to start having errors in it after about 15 or 20 years. So that media is not permanent either. So one of the things that I've been involved with is trying to maintain a bunch of old machines that can play these obsolete formats. And if you think of the formats that have been around in your lifetime that are no longer valid, you know, there's 8 millimeter film, 16 millimeter film, three-quarter inch videotape, half inch videotape, one inch videotape. Even digital formats of videotape, you can no longer find machines that can play them. And yet we have all this material on shelves, and it, it reminded me a lot of hearing about the glass negatives they have here. We need ways to store things that will last at least a lifetime, maybe a little bit longer. One of the things that I've recently discovered and I'm starting to work with is a thing called the M drive, which literally writes a disc that can be read in a DVD player, but it records it on a layer of obsidian. So it's essentially stone. The only things that have lasted over the years have been carved in stone. So this is one possible way that we can save the past so that I don't know who in the future might care to see it or read it or try to understand it, but at least if somebody wanted to, it would be there and it would be possible. So those are my time machines. I bet if you think about it, you all have time machines of your own in one form or another, and I would encourage you to think twice before you put it in the landfill. That's my idea we're sharing. Thank you.